Hello, I'm James Wahlberg, and I'm going to show you how to identify the flow of charges in the salt bridge of a galvanic electrolytic cell. Let's take a look. To understand the flow of charges within a salt bridge, you have to understand the problem that the salt bridge solves. And that is that as a galvanic electrolytic cell operates, the anode half cell becomes positively charged. And you recall that the anode is where oxidation takes place. So electrons are leaving the anode, but electrons are attracted to positively charged regions in space. Therefore, as that anode half cell becomes more positively charged, it's going to be harder and harder for those electrons to leave. Likewise, if you look at the cathode half cell, it becomes negatively charged as the galvanic cell operates. And the cathode is where reduction happens, where electrons are gained. So as that cathode becomes more negative, the negatively charged electrons are going to become more and more repelled by that negative charge. Put together, these two observations show that the buildup of charge in the half cells will eventually stop the reaction from happening, even if there are more electrons to flow. So a salt bridge fixes this problem by connecting the two half cells and allowing charges to flow between them and equalize out. A salt bridge is simply just a tube filled with some inert electrolyte gel. Inert here, meaning that uh, the electrolyte neither becomes oxidized nor reduced. It does not participate in the electrochemical reaction. And as the cell runs, as the charges build up in the half cells in the way that I just described, these inert electrolytes migrate out of the salt bridge and neutralize in each half cell uh, the charges that have built up. And that solves the problem that would otherwise stop the cell from running. All right, so let's take a look at how we can do this. So remember, the key things to know are that electrolyte anions migrate to the anode. That's a good monomic. And anions, negatively charged species, will migrate towards the anode. And cations, positively charged species, will migrate towards the cathode. Looking through this example, we can talk through these ideas in particular. From our table of reduction potentials, we see that the reduction potential of the silver half reaction is greater than the reduction potential of the magnesium half reaction. Therefore, the silver side will be the cathode where the reduction will happen, and the magnesium side will be the anode where the oxidation will happen. So electrons will flow from anode to cathode, as they always do in all types of electrochemical cells. But that means that this reaction, as written for the magnesium half cell, is actually going to run in the reverse direction, as shown. This means that we're going to have a buildup of positively charged magnesium cations in solution. And again, these negatively charged electrons will be attracted to those positively charged magnesium cations, and it's going to become harder and harder for those electrons to leave and go and reduce the silver anions on the other half cell. So to neutralize that buildup of positive magnesium charges, our salt bridge electrolyte, which is potassium nitrate, the nitrate anions will migrate out of the salt bridge and will neutralize electrically those positive magnesium cations that are building up in the anode half reaction. On the other side, you can see that as silver ions, silver cations become reduced, we'll have fewer and fewer positively charged silver cations in solution in that half cell. As we have less and less positive charge, that's really another way of saying that that half cell is becoming more and more negative. So to balance that out electrically, positively charged potassium cations will migrate out of the salt bridge and into the silver half reaction, thereby neutralizing electrically the buildup of those positive charges. So if you combine all of the things you know about galvanic electrochemical cells, you can easily predict which way the charges will flow from a salt bridge and understand what the salt bridge is doing in a galvanic cell. Good luck with your study of chemistry. I'll see you in another video.